the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Grothman, is now recognized. Mr. Grothman. Thank you. Um, a few questions for all of you. Um, and I don't really know the answers or not, but these are, I think, the type of questions that people back home are concerned about. Um, how many people were in the Capitol that day? I mean, members of the public. How many, how many got in? Does anybody know the answer to that question? And it's, it's Director Ray. I, I don't know that we have the, uh, uh, a reliable estimate, but certainly we've already arrested uh, close to 500. Uh, and we have hundreds of investigations uh, that are still ongoing beyond those okay. 500. I, I know Senator Johnson got a limited amount of video, and he's having his staff try to figure that out. I mean, we're about five months after this took place. We still don't know how many people are in the Capitol. You can't just give me that 1,100, 800. We don't know, huh? We don't know. Okay. Of those people in the Capitol, well, I am under the impression that day that there are people who clearly horrifically did, did wrong things. We saw them on the video. They broke the windows. They, uh, they broke in. But we also remember seeing people on TV that day who were almost led in the Capitol. Um, could you break down, give me numbers broken down in those two areas, the number who broke their way into the Capitol and the number that appeared to almost be escorted in by the Capitol Police. Uh, I'm not sure I could give you reliable numbers on that sitting here right now, but I, maybe let me try it this way. Um, when we look, when we step back and we look at January 6th as a whole, you have one group of people who didn't uh, breach the Capitol, didn't enter unlawfully into the Capitol, didn't commit acts, who were sort of peaceful rowdy protesters. Those are not people that we are pursuing. And there's a second group, smaller, uh, but still very sizable, who were uh, in the moment engaged in all sorts of criminal behavior uh, of the sort that you're describing. And those people are being prosecuted for a variety of offenses. And then there's a third group, which while the smallest, is by far and away the most serious. Uh, and those are the people who were clearly coming with intent to commit very serious mayhem, who brought all sorts of uh, weapons and protective gear and other things with them. Uh, and those are the people who face the most serious charges. And so I sort of look at it as a kind of inverse pyramid with the most serious people being the smallest group, but all of them are, it's a sizable number, obviously. We've already indicted 30 something for conspiracy yeah. charges alone. And uh, as I said, I, I, I wanna focus a little bit on the people who didn't do any physical damage, didn't engage in any physical contact with the police, and at least appeared to me that day to be allowed in the Capitol. Are there people like that? Like that who were, who were in the Capitol? Correct. As I recall watching TV that day, there were people who it appeared we're walking in the door and it appeared as though the Capitol Police, perhaps out of exhaustion for whatever motivation, allowed people to walk in the Capitol. Are there people like that? Well, I, I you know, at any given moment, you might have somebody uh, uh, caught on a particular stretch of video walking along in a way that's unremarkable. I really can't speak in a broad categorical way about, about intent well, of individual people. People back home are concerned about a certain class of person. I want to know whether you feel these people existed. Were there people allowed in the Capitol who didn't engage in any physical confrontation or do any damage and, and, and just wound up in the Capitol, breaking the law, but they would have no idea, way of knowing they're breaking the law? Were there people like that? I, I really can't give you an assessment of that at this stage. That's why we're investigating, and that sometimes investigations lead to charges, and sometimes they don't. Uh, are, you, are have you arrested? Would... Are, you, you talked about all the 500 people or whatever have been arrested. Are any of those people you arrested, would they be included in the type of people I just described? I, I really can't say. What I would say is that people who uh, have been arrested, have been arrested because they violated federal criminal law and there were sufficient facts to support the elements oh, of the offense. Okay, the I'm, 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 I'm running out of time. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna ask you one more question. Were people arrested 
who walked in the Capitol had perhaps had no reason to know they were breaking the law and were, as one Capitol policeman described it to me, just milling around. Were people like that arrested and are they still in jail? Can't speak to any specific case, so I'm really not sure that but I can answer one, the question. We've had 500. We've had 500 arrests, and they range in all sorts of variations in facts and circumstances. The gentleman's time expired. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals no matter what color they are. When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. You know, you look at January 6th, everybody has said it was a tragic day, it never should have yep. happened, they wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson, he looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that and you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th th there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that that January 6th 
is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage ap across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th, and they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people. Right, and so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out, and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they they have proven themselves to be, uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So, um, is white supremacy? It, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to to America? I think that's overblown, and I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has, has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the, is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.